Okay. So I just wanted to welcome you guys to our team Zoom. Um, I was telling Crystal that, um, oh, it's Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Glad to have you. Um, I was telling Crystal that we had been in a pretty good routine of doing these, and then summer and, and just schedules kind of had gotten us out of the habit. And I think this is a really important um, way for us to connect where we actually get to chat through some things. Facebook is great, but sometimes quick little messages, it's hard to get um, to communicate points through there. So uh, my hope is to keep these rolling and just make this a way for us to do some training and also um, be a resource to answer any questions that you have. Um, so I wanted to just kind of start off, and I think I'm going to go through a little bit of training, and then we'll work our way through talking about this next challenge that we have coming up. Um, and I'm going to try to keep it moving along in the interest of time because I know we all have busy schedules. Um, but I think probably the first thing um, as a coach and, and in talking with each one of you guys one on one, I think we're all here. Um, everybody's in a little bit different place. Everybody's interested in the coaching thing, but not exactly sure where you fall as far as, you know, is it, is it a hobby? Is it something you want to do for some income? And, and I think I mentioned to you guys, I've been kind of at all three places, and I think that's okay. Um, I think the secret to it is figuring out why you want to be a coach. It doesn't matter how much and how much time you invest, as long as you understand why you want to coach. Um, I'm going to throw out some things that are reasons why or, or benefits that I found from coaching. Um, and, and kind of let you do some thinking. And I would love for sometime over the weekend for you guys to just shoot me um, what you think your reason for coaching is. And I think for me, it's been a work in progress and it's taken me a long time to get here as to, to what I love about it and why I want to keep moving forward. But I think it is important to understand. Um, but mine, I kind of came up with my top six. Um, number one for me is for my own accountability. I find that by coaching and being responsible to others, I do a better job with my own journey. So that's a big part of it. And honestly, if there was no money involved in it at all, it benefits me so much personally that I would do it anyway. Um, I think the second reason is I really feel like we each have a responsibility to pay it forward. Um, you know, each one of us is here because somebody helped us. And any one coach, there's only so many people that each one of us can help, but together, um, there's lots of lives that we can impact. So that, I think, is a big thing. I think each one of us has special gifts, and, and the talents of, you know, Crystal and Courtney and the rest of the people on the team are not going to be the same things that I bring to the table. So together, um, there's a lot more that we have to offer as a team. Um, I think the other thing for me is I have just grown as a person um, in terms of my self-confidence, in terms of my leadership. And so I think it benefits any other passions that you have out there or things that you want to do. So I think it helps you grow as a person. Um, a big one is just the fun, um, the reward trips, the, the friendship, the camaraderie that comes with it. Life is so much more fun when it's done together. So. That's my number five. And then number six gets talked about a lot, I think, because it is a business. And a lot of these people are out here making a career out of it. Um, but it's money and, and the ability to create some financial freedom. So I think the important thing is to come up with what you love about it and go for it. So anyway, I feel like since I can't see you guys, I feel like I'm just talking. So is everybody still with me? Yes. Okay, yay. Um, let's see. So that's kind of it. Like I said, if you can kind of just put some thought into that and shoot me um, a message, I would love to hear that. I'm going to start um, next by just doing a couple of announcement type things. Um, one is Super Saturday. And for those of you guys that haven't heard about it, it's um, four times a year we have kind of a coaches rally. Oh, thanks, Courtney. Um, anyway, one, four times a year we have like a coaches rally where we get together. It's a good networking thing. Um, it's just kind of a, a good chance to bond to the rest of the community. 
and there's a corporate video that's shared that has all the new announcements, whatever's latest and greatest with Beachbody. Um, some success stories are shared, which are usually super motivational and inspirational, and just a great time to get together. So we are gonna be doing ours, I hope you saw it in the group, but we're gonna be doing actually a super Sunday. Um, normally I connect into the bigger Beachbody community for these, but I goofed and scheduled something for that weekend, so we're gonna have our own. Um, and it's gonna be Sunday, October 18th from three to five at the Carbon Valley Library out here in Firestone. Um, it's gonna be a pink themed workout and you can just come in your workout clothes because we'll do some meeting and some workout. But if you can, it's generally um, designed for coaches and maybe people that you would think would be interested in being a coach. If you have new people, they could probably join us for the workout part of it and we could talk about that. Um, and they could certainly come to the business meeting, but it is more of a business meeting. So you just wouldn't want somebody to be caught off guard by that. Um, so that's that. Um, and then just kind of something to be aware of. I am in the works of putting together a challenge um, because one of the big steps for each of you well, we're going to be talking about just um, activities that help make you successful as a coach. Um, one of the big goals is to help each of you get to your first milestone, and that is Emerald. And I think I've talked to a lot of you about that, but all Emerald means is that you have one coach on each side of your team. Um, and so I'm going to be putting together a little contest, so watch for that. But just kind of know in the back of your head, the goal for all of us is to have you Emerald by November 26th so that you get to play in the activity that I have planned. Um, so more details coming soon on that. Um, I think I talked a little bit about just, um, you know, talking about the things that help you be successful as a coach. And separate from the contest to get to Emerald, I'm also doing a coach's challenge for the month of October. And what I'm gonna be doing is rewarding and giving out prizes for doing the things that we should be doing every day as a coach. Um, things like posting, posting your workout or Shakeology or your meals or something like that on your timeline, inviting people and ultimately getting success club points. So in case you haven't noticed, our little banner on our team page has changed. And it has the little, um, oh gosh, the little image that shows what you can get points for. So it is gonna be completely self-reported. You'll just keep track of your own points for the things that you're doing. Um, and then at the end of each week, I'm gonna have you guys total up your points and submit them. I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a weekly winner and then also one winner for the whole month. Um, so I've got some good prizes for you for that. So does that make sense? Do you guys have questions about the coach's challenge? Yay, Courtney's, Courtney's got it. I'm good, I'm excited. Yeah, me too, me too. I think it, it helps, because I think probably the biggest thing that I've seen lately that's helped me be successful is being consistent. It's not, um, you know, it's not sending out 100 invitations once, it's doing a little bit each day. So I think if I can help you guys build those habits, it really, um, working as a coach doesn't take that long if you just do a little bit each day. Um, so I'm excited about it, yay. All right, so let's dive in. Kind of our big training for today is on overcoming objections because if you're doing those things, um, if you're asking people to join you, if you're sharing what you're doing, somebody's gonna rain on your parade or somebody's gonna say, Gosh, that sounds great, but I can't because. Um, and so let's kind of together um, just brainstorm. And Courtney, if you want to just type yours, um, any that you think of. But let's just kind of brainstorm the most common things that you think people will object to. And I know Crystal posted a message to this effect. Um, but really, the, the objections are usually fairly common. So once we get good at overcoming those objections, um, it gets pretty easy to help people. So what do you, what either have you heard or do you anticipate hearing when you talk to somebody about doing a challenge? The cost. The cost, okay. Mm -hmm. That's a common one. 
And you had mentioned time. Let's see, I can't see. I'm trying to look at the chat thing. Okay. So cost, time. Um, Crystal, you said you had a person that mentioned that they have trouble staying committed. Uh-huh. So they, they just said they have a hard time sticking to things? Yep. Okay. And I tried talking to them about it, but, you know, some people get it stuck in their head that they just can't stay committed. Right. Right. Okay. I think a lot of times, too, um, I've had people that say, oh, I'm going on vacation, you know, now is not the right time, or, you know, maybe once, you know, X, Y, and Z happen, then it will be the right time. Um, I think that's a real common one. But honestly, I think the, there really aren't that many objections. So the good news is, is that once you get good at chatting with people about them, um, you know, I think it gets easier. And I think that's honestly what's been key to a lot of my recent success is I've just had a lot of practice now. And so what used to take me a long time to come up with a response are things that I come up with pretty quickly. Um, so I think I will say um, one, one of the things that I had to do personally is really because there, the cost one is a big objection for me personally. It's expensive. And so I think kind of spending a little bit of time in your own mind of figuring out, like each one of us is paying for it, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and we're not crazy and we're not people that just throw money around. So there has to be some value and there has to be some reason. So for me personally, I had to do a little bit of evaluating of why am I willing to spend the money on this? So that, that helped me a little bit. Um, in overcoming any, oops. Okay, hold on. So Courtney says, I haven't heard an objection yet. Oops, I lost it. Um, but what about the cost with Shaco? Maybe if they're worried about the cost, tell them about the sample pack and try that first. I break it down to a meal per day. Yeah. Like you spend $10 on lunch. What's $4 in cost? You're saving money in the long run. Yeah, exactly. And, and what I do too is I kind of try to talk to them about the fact that, um, you know, because you're factoring it into your meals, you know, you're not buying other things, like you said, like like going out to lunch, buying other things. Um, I think that the sample pack is definitely, and we can talk about that. There is a sample pack that has four samples in it. Um, I kind of go both ways. I, I've used the sample pack to run like some free groups. It's not free groups, but like less expensive groups where they can try it. Um, but honestly, I think the benefits of Shakeology are long-term benefits. And so I don't think you necessarily see them in four servings. So um, a sample pack is a good way for them to, to taste it and to kind of get a feel for the product and maybe pick their flavor. But I don't know that they're really going to see the value in just a sample pack. But that's just kind of my opinion. Um, but going into just kind of all objections, one of the, the methods that, that you'll hear a lot used um, and I use it kind of very loosely because I don't want it to sound um, salesy or, or can, a canned response, but I think you can kind of touch on all of these points when you're talking about something. Is It's called feel, felt, found. Okay, so you, the first thing you do is you acknowledge how they feel. So acknowledging the fact that I get it, you know, you, you think that this is expensive. You know, not trying to... Um, Kind of dismiss or whatever what they're feeling but just acknowledge it head on of you know I, I understand how you feel and you can either say like like what I will say is in the beginning I felt like that too um, it seemed like a lot of money um, so it's feel felt and then found and so you can say something like but what I found is and kind of what Crystal was talking about it actually saves me money because I'm not going out to lunch um, or what I found is that for me, like in my case, I would say, I understand how you feel. I felt like that in the beginning too. It seemed like a lot of money. But what I found is 
that it actually is saving me on my groceries and I feel so much better physically that in my opinion, it's completely worth it. So I think you can touch on all of those things without it sounding real canned. I mean, I, I think it needs to be real conversational. And I think it's important to listen, to, to really hear what the objections are. Um, because it, you know, what, what you might be hearing is that, you know, gosh, $130 for a bag is a lot. Um, and, and really kind of asking some more questions about how they spend their money on, on their food budget and, and trying to, to come up with a response that way. Um, so have any of you guys actually tried that method before in other things that you've done? No, I've never thought of saying, I, you know, this, I know how you feel, this is how I felt. I've never thought of it that way. I like that. I do too, and I feel like by acknowledging that you, you know, I think so many times people can go off in their blurb about here's why psychology is so great, but they never acknowledge the person's feeling. You know, it's like, it, it's a valid thing, and I think, honestly, we've all been there. Um, we're kind of, you know, at the point where we've seen the benefits or, or like in Courtney's case, you're jumping in and going for it to, to figure it all out. Um, but I think it's, you know, when you've seen the benefits, it's easy to justify the cost. But when you're sitting on the other side of it, it seems like a lot of money. Um, yeah, I think it is really important to listen to. Them. I think the other important thing in a, overcoming all of these is to understand, um, why, why do they want to get, you know, why do they want to do this? Um, understanding people's motivation, because I think when we are truly motivated to do something, we will find a way. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, a lot of times I'll be that direct. I think part of two helps me is becoming more confident in speaking truth to people of just saying, I get it. You know, we all have, we all have things that we need to spend our money on, but I honestly believe that we spend money on what we value. And for me, I value my health and I want to be, you know, around a long time. I want to have energy to play with my kids. I want to be able to do all the things I want to do. And this helps me do it. Um, so I think, you know, li listening, confirming you understand what they're saying um, and really trying to relate to them and understanding, you know, what their motivation is, I, I think are all big things. Um, I think so that I think that all of those are good ways to address the cost cost issue. Um, the time, I think, is you know kind of back to if it's important, we'll find a way. And you know, what I tell people a lot of times is you know it's it's 30 minutes. We waste 30 minutes on Facebook or watching a TV show or or sitting here talking about working out. So. You know, again, we make time for what we value. Um, so trouble staying committed. I think a, a statistic that I like is, did you know that people that have a coach and a challenge group supporting them are 80% more likely to complete one of these programs than they are on their own? I mean, these programs are fantastic, but not everybody has what it takes to finish it. And so if I, if I had somebody that said they have a hard time staying committed, then I would say that's exactly why you need us, is that it's hard to do it alone. Um, it's hard to always stay motivated. It's, always, you know, it's hard to always be, you know, I guess, upbeat and positive. And, and so that's why we do this together, is because we can kind of keep each other going and motivated. Um, so I don't know. Do, do you guys have it? Do you feel more prepared to deal with that kind of stuff, or do you have questions or particular scenarios you want to walk through? No, I think having that statistic, you know, num people like numbers. They do like so numbers. You can say 80% of people that join challenge groups and have a coach are more successful with staying committed. I think you're more likely to get somebody to actually do it. Right. Well, and to have somebody that's on, you know, how many of us would like to have peop more people on our team cheering us on? You know, it seems like the world teaches us so much to compete with each other and to be better than one another. That for me, I love being a part of people that actually want to see me succeed. So. Agreed. 
to me, that's what I love about the groups. Um, I would encourage you guys, I think one of the things that took me the longest time, I'm not really a person that um, is kind of a self-taught person. I, I don't have this natural love for learning. So it took me a long time to really understand Shakeology. My coach asked me to drink it. It worked. I felt good. And so I just kind of went with it. Um, but some people need more than just it worked for me. And so when I finally started digging into the ingredients and why it was different from other things out there on the market, I really felt like I could talk about it more confidently. Um, so there is, and you know, I'll post it in the group. But there is um, a picture that I share with a lot of people that lists the ingredients that are in Shakeology and then next to them the benefits that come from those ingredients. And the other thing I tell them is the ingredients in the top two categories um, you're likely to maybe find in another protein shake. Um, now a lot of other protein shakes have um, artificial flavors, chemicals, things that we shouldn't be putting in our bodies. But if we're looking at it just from a benefit standpoint, you're only getting the benefits from the top two groups from a protein shake. Whereas when you start looking at all the other benefits down below, that's the difference um, with Shakeology is some of those other benefits. Um, and then really becoming a detective when it comes to ingredients. I've been amazed how um, I had somebody that wanted to group, join my group with a different product, a different shake. And so I just said, well, send me the, send me the label and I'll take a look. Um, kind of honestly in the back of my mind knowing that it wasn't going to work, but I felt like it made me seem more open to the fact that there are more than one way to, to do this. And so if it was a good product, I probably would have let them keep doing it. Um, but in looking at the label, I was able to educate them of all of the bad ingredients that were on that label. Um, things that they really shouldn't be putting in their body because it was harming them more than it was helping them. So I think it's a good opportunity to be able to educate yourself and be able to educate others as you start having, having the courage to look at those labels. Um, so I would say too, like if you get into wanting to look at labels with people, I'll be happy to help you if you get stuck. Um, but I also think it's a good way, like I don't ever bash somebody else's product. And what I'll right. say is, you know, I don't get into talking bad about other products. What I will say is these particular ingredients that are in this shake are not something that I would put in my body, and here's why. And then I just kind of leave it up to them and let them make the decision and, and come to the conclusion themselves. But I do feel like that um, confidence has helped a lot. So I think at this point, I'd love to just kind of open it up to... You know, what questions do you have about overcoming objections? Do you feel good about it? Do you, what are you still nervous about? And let's just kind of chat through what you got going. Any? I don't have any questions. I think I'm good. I think the stuff we talked about will help me. I, I'm excited because I've noticed a difference in how I'm feeling and I'm seeing results from it and stuff. So I think it's a lot easier when you have your own self story to just be able to tell people that. Right, exactly. And I think that's what you'll see. If you notice on the Coaches Challenge for October, you get points for sharing your story on Facebook. And I think that's more powerful than, than anything else is just saying, you know, this is what's working for me. And I, you know, I would love to share it with you. And I think there are lots of different, you know, like with, for me with Shakeology, I can share, gosh, my morning was busy. Here's how it's helping me in my busy morning. Or um, I know one of the things, and I don't think I've posted about this in a while, but I used to have just a ton of digestive and stomach issues. It seemed like pretty much, you know, once or twice a week, I would end up with just like such a bad stomach ache. I want to go lay down and I didn't feel good. And I haven't had that since drinking Shakeology. And so those are all little snippets or sharing some of your bigger story. Um, but I think that's really powerful. Okay, question about free challenges. What is it, how they work? Let me hold on. Okay, so, oh yeah, that reminds me. I am in the process too of putting together a free challenge for us. 
um, that, that you guys can offer. But honestly, free challenges are anything as a coach that you want to offer. Um, so I don't know if you guys, did anybody get a chance to watch Alicia's um, training that she did on challenge groups on the Rockstar Zoom? I haven't had a chance to yet. I would, I would highly recommend that. She has been just crazy successful. Um, and mostly just by sharing her story, she's done a lot. She was a person that herself, she didn't start with Shakeology. She kind of added it on when she decided to become a coach. Um, she lets a lot of people into her groups that aren't currently, um, you know, aren't currently buying much from her. So it would be a great one to watch. But here's what I would say is that as a coach, you get to do this however you like. Um, so you can offer whatever kind of free challenge you want. There's ideas out there of things that are already put together, or you can put your own thing together. Um, the one that I'm going to be working on putting together is five days, and I'm going to call it a pizza and chocolate challenge. Um, and what it's going to be, I, I'm, it's still kind of rattling around in my head, but I'm a person that likes to eat pizza and chocolate. And so I'm going to talk about how to incorporate those things into a healthy lifestyle because I feel like when people learn how to eat what they like, um, they're most they're more likely to stick with it. So um, kind of in my head, I have like maybe a five day challenge with healthy dinners planned. Um, I might I, I'm thinking the chocolate. I might send out a free sample of of Shakeology to each person that signs up for it, and that will be the chocolate mm -hmm. aspect of it. Um, and then maybe pizza at the end of the week as a treat meal. So that's a good idea. It can be really whatever you want to put together. Or I thought this go around, I'm going to put mine together and I'll just share it. And if you guys want to use it for yourselves, you can. I think I mentioned to some of you guys in the one on ones that when we do free challenges, we really kind of do those on our own and separately because you really want to connect with those people yourself. Um, so I'll give you the content to run the challenge, but you'll run those challenges on your own. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. And, and mostly what it does too, if we get five or six coaches in a free group, then it's hard to figure out, you know, I, I don't want to run the risk of anybody stealing customers from each other unintentionally. And so it's just easier that way to have each person connect with people individually. Okay, good. Oh. Okay, so no, it does. It can be whatever you want it to be. I have had some of the easiest ones I have run as far as free challenges are a 30-day abs challenge. And you can go on Google Images, and um, on Google Images, there, if you just type in like 30-day abs challenge, um, you'll come up with a list of the workouts. Um, so I've used some of those things. You want to make sure you don't use the graphic of a coach that has their logo and information plastered all over the bottom because then you're advertising for them. But I've taken ideas and kind of made up my own. So it can, it can really be whatever you want to do. Um, just, it's just kind of an opportunity to get in front of people and, and get them working with you. So, yeah. All right. Any questions before I wrap us up here? I'm good. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I'm just realizing I'm hoping whoever's watching the recording can actually see the little comments that are popping up on my screen because I've been answering questions based on Courtney's comments. So hopefully if you're watching the recording, you can follow along. Um, but I want to just thank you guys. I know you're busy and um, I want to thank you for jumping in on this. I definitely want to make this a good use of your time. So if you guys have topics that you want to cover, feel free to post suggestions in the group. I'll be happy to do that. Um, hold on, it's giving me the 10 minute warning, so, which is good, it keeps us on task so we don't talk too long. But um, I do want this to serve your needs and, and wanna be a resource to you, so thanks for being on. I just kinda wanna wrap up with a little thought. Um, there's a book called Great by Choice, Uncertainty, Chaos, and Luck, Why Some Thrive Despite All of Them. Um, and it's by Jim Collins. I honestly haven't read the book yet, but I read an article about it. And one of the things he talks about in there is, um, yeah, exactly. I wish you had a microphone too. 
But anyway, one of the things he talks about in the book is this story. And there are two groups of individuals um, that are hiking to the North Pole. And um, both groups are pretty much equipped with the same equipment, same physical abilities. Um, one group takes the strategy of they are going to walk 20 miles every day no matter what, whether the weather's nice, whether the weather's terrible, 20 days every day, or 20 miles every day. Okay? And the second group takes the approach, they're going to walk about 40 to 60 miles on the good days. And on the bad days, they're going to rest in their tents. Um, and that's kind of their strategy. Well, the story ends, the team that actually makes it to the North Pole is the one that walked 20 miles a day. Um, they make it to the North Pole. Unfortunately, the team that only walked, or that walked the 40 to 60 on the good days, um, they were found the next summer. They had died in the cold. Um, and it's a sad story, but I think the lesson to be learned is there's never going to be enough good days to be successful. I think um, in our challenges for our own fitness and for um, building something that's successful like a business, there are not going to be enough good days if you only work on the good days, if you only do this when it's convenient and fits in your schedule. And that's why I talk a lot about doing a little bit every day. It's kind of that 20, march those 20 miles every day, and that's how you're going to get to your goal. So I hope that helps, and, and we'll talk a lot about that. Um, and I'm going to do a lot to try to reinforce and help encourage you guys to do the right things to be successful. So if nobody has anything else, I, I think we'll wrap it up. Are we good? I'm good. Yay. Well, thank you for being on. I will see you on the great page on the group page and you guys have a wonderful weekend. You Bye. as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.